Eight days out from their grand final appearance and a much changed Munster side aims to close out the regular season with a win over Benetton, who have lost all 13 of their matches in this competition so far. The Italians, though, just seconds away from victory when these two sides met in Treviso back in January until a last gasp a drop goal from JJ Hanrahan rescued Munster. With their nemesis Leinster on the horizon, 13 changes from the side that beat the Scarlets here last weekend. Dermot Bar Barron, Keenan Knox and Thomas O'Hearn all start in the forward pack with 20-year-old Kean Hurley making his senior debut. There's also first starts in the back line for Paddy Patterson and Jake Flannery. Andrew Conway released from Ireland camp to start on the wing and with Joey Carberry not featuring in the match day 23, it's JJ Hanrahan at 10. Benetton account for nine of Franco Smith's Italian starting team to play Scotland at Murrayfield tomorrow, including five of the eight forwards. Herbst and Snyman, the South African pairing in the second row, and Manuel Zuliani brings a huge work rate on the open side flank. It's Divel Duvenaga and Tommaso Allen in the half-backs for Benetton tonight. Esposito, Taviara and Hayward making up a potent back three. Benetton have never won on Munster soil, although they almost did just that on their most recent trip here, losing a playoff quarter-final match, you may recall, but just by two points in 2019, a game that they felt they should have won in what was uh, arguably their best season so far. They're a long way off that kind of standard this season. As Jack O'Donoghue and his team wits will know, Benetton will arrive in Limerick tonight, hoping to take a scalp at the end of what's been a very, very poor season by their standards. They have fallen off the radar in many respects. They're going through a transition, though, behind the scenes this summer. Uh, some of these monster players, Andrew Conway in particular, playing for a place in next week's final. Big night for Holly Davidson from Scotland, taking charge of her first yeah, Guinness Pro 14 match, Thanks, having come much. through the elite referee pathway. Yeah, She's the second female yes, official to referee Thank in this championship now following in the footsteps of Joy Neville who is also on duty tonight as our television match official Monster. so a groundbreaking occasion at Toman Park in Limerick will it be Time a on. groundbreaking evening for the men from Treviso Benetton have never won here and it's their fly half Tommaso Allen who gets us underway against this inexperienced Monster side really interesting to see how the likes of Keane Hurley and Dermot Barron go a lot of eyes too on Jake Flannery, supremely talented, versatile player, equally adept at fly half or at fullback, and he's in wearing number 15 tonight. Bernard Jackman alongside me in commentary tonight. Yeah, really looking forward to seeing some of those players that you just mentioned, Connor, Dermot Barron, uh, you know, Keane Hurley, uh, Tom Sahern we know a little bit about from, from the games he's played for Munster already in his under-20s career, and, and Jake Flannery, who I've seen a lot of to 10, not that much of a full-back, but just great to see him get some game time tonight and hopefully get some good ball. Early line-out for Thomas Barravelli, the Benetton hooker, just outside the Munster 22, and they put it through the hands now of the half-backs and quick service from... Duval Duvenaga to Tommaso Allen and looking to get Angelo Esposito in off that left wing. Tommaso Allen again pulling the strings and they do have, as I said, a lot of talent in this back line. They look to try and play heads up rugby on what is a, a lovely night, albeit the temperature plummeting quite uh, considerably in the last half an hour or so. Yeah, you just see here, this man just shorten up the Munster defence to throw the missed pass. Um, unfortunately, it goes to ground. That's been their season, really. You know, passes that were sticking last year and the year before are now just a little bit inaccurate, and they're probably a team low on confidence, which is understandable given some of the results they've had. Yes, beaten last week by Cardiff at the Stadio Monigo, and really the low point of the season came in the Derby games at Christmas time when they lost home and away to Zebra. First time that's ever happened. And there you see the unmissable figure wearing number five of Thomas O'Hearn, all six foot nine inches of him. Paddy Patterson now gets it into Jack O'Sullivan, Jack O'Donoghue, Chris Clute, and Jack O'Sullivan, the monster back row tonight. Good to see Tommy O'Donnell back on the monster bench and looking for further game time before the season is out. Good tester, wasn't it, for Esposito, who watched it well. No, Jaden Hayward had to juggle with it, but did so to good effect. And again, they put it straight out to the far out 
side to Taviara, try and get that offload going after the tackle. Didn't quite go to hand on this occasion. Okay. Yeah, and again, really good intent, great take in the Big air. Uh, Coombs okay. makes a good decision to stay down, he's just a little bit overcooked. And again, trying to get that missed pass, but just not going to hand. And this man, he loves to offload, he's always going to try it, and, you know, this time it goes into touch, but he, he is so dangerous. Yeah, Obviously, the other winger, Monte Ioni, will be playing for Italy tomorrow, but, uh, yeah, every time he gets the ball, something something's going to happen. Good and bad. <laughs> very, very unpredictable. Okay. When I spoke about that quarterfinal playoff a couple of years ago. He was so good that season. Also instrumental in the last time that Benetton won on Irish soil, which was uh, at the RDS of all places in April of 2018. As I said, Munster have won the last 11 encounters between these two sides and never lost at home. Yeah, you mentioned. Benetton going through a bit of transition. Obviously, Paul Gustard, the uh, ex Saracens okay. England and, and Harlequins uh, coach, is coming in as defence coach. Uh, Kieran Crowley looked like he was about to turn them around, and, and they just haven't been able to kick on, which is obviously disappointing for them, for him. But um, probably suffering as well from the poor results at national level, coming back down to uh, the club level, and just the, the lack of confidence that uh, losing week in week out can have on a team. Yes, Marco. Portalami confirmed as the head coach recently enough in the season. Andrea Massi going in there as well, so it's all change in behind the scenes. Stay there. So on the 10 metre line, first opportunity for the Cashel man, Dermot Barron, to hit his targets. Looking for and finding his captain of the night, Jack O'Donoghue. He's been so prolific in that back row this season. Jack O'Donoghue has played a huge amount of minutes, almost ever present in the first seven or eight games. And they're making good, steady progress here. The Munster Packer forwards right up over halfway, and they're beginning now to accelerate. And you can see Jack O'Donoghue communicating with the referee, Holly Davidson, all the way down that far side. And the outstretched arm of the referee indicating an advantage here and an opportunity for Munster to try something a little bit different. Oh, great delivery from Conway, wasn't it? All the way out to Coombs. Coombs now rampaging inside that 22 of Benetton. Ball is there. No advantage. He wasn't quite coming back quick enough, so we'll go all the way back for that penalty off what was a very effective line-out ball on the far Two. side. He's changing his bike yeah, the ball. Just listening to the referee explain that was changing changing the blind, but really positive bit of play off, uh, off an advantage here. They use Scanlon's first receiver, getting JJ's second set of hands, and that's a, a great pass for uh, from Conway across. Good changing cover by. defense, and unfortunately, just couldn't win that ball. We see that drive from the pack, it's a young pack, but just the level of detail that Graham Rowntree's put on it. And you know, it's great to play off to get advantage first of all at source, and then obviously have a little look and come back um, if, you, if you can't uh, capitalize on it. Always good to try and utilise that left-footed kicking nice option right. of Rory Scannell. Touch just inside the Benetton 22. Fine. So, well, the message seemed to be from Johan van Graan pre-game that the conditions are in favour of a heads-up, expansive game of rugby. A lively start from both sides with ball in hand. Over 15. And this time, Byron goes a little bit deeper, and it was a good adjustment by Thomas O'Hearn. Luckily, manufacturer here. JJ Hanran heads up looking for Coombs. Has he measured it? Good take from Coombs. He had to just almost slow down and think about going into reverse and gathered it at the second time of asking. Ball slow to come back to the Monster scrum half, Patterson, but now they get moving. Three or four big targets poised. It was Ahern who was the decoy on that occasion. Now Patterson goes and works a shorter pass inside the bar, and he's so good around the contact area. And this time, ball goes to Groin. It'll be put into a Benetton scrummage. Unfortunate from Kean Hurley, where that was good approach play again from Munster. Yeah, really good. Great couple of throws from Dermot Barron. The time he went over to 15 uh, to Thomas Ahern. Nice, nice hands with Thomas Ahern. Just juggles with it for a second, but reclaims it. And from yeah, this, they just sent Paddy Patterson on a dummy. Dummy let right and opens up the space on the left hand side for Coombs and just doesn't sit down for him. He has to just wait for, for a second. Nice kick from JJ. Um, 
probably disappointed hang time if he can catch that flush it's going to take a big effort to stop him but uh, yeah really positive sign from Munster very to play really well third start of the season for Liam Coombs started the Ulster game just after Christmas up in Belfast and then the Benetton game in January in Treviso that was one courtesy of that JJ Hanlon and drop goal that I mentioned so Liam O'Connor, Jamie Barron and Keenan Knox, the Munster front row tonight. Good to see Liam O'Connor back getting game time as well, a player who's been beset by injuries over the last couple of seasons. At one stage he was out for around 18 months or so. A couple of passes and then the long kick downfield, decent exit strategy and a beautifully measured kick, really, really good. Yeah, that's a brilliant exit from from Benetton and you know they have really experienced halfbacks with D or Duvalt and, and obviously Tommaso Adam but again just using that right foot bringing the winger up but throwing that extra pass and then finding that space in behind so Kieran Crowley be delighted with that exit boys get there Joaquin Riera one of uh, quite a few Argentinians in the squad 26 year old outside centre Hurley and Ahern, the targets there. Jack O'Donoghue also. Good contest. And once again, it's not entirely clean. And, well, it had gone forward, but... On the arm in the air. There was an... Um, yeah, there was Five. a little bit of uh, contact in the air, and that forced the knock-on, so it's a penalty to Munster. Number five, contact on the arm. It's against Ellie Snyman. One of the two South Africans in that Benetton second row tonight. JJ Hanrahan's kick is a good one. And Munster back in prime attacking position. Yeah, we just see it here. It's a great throw, double tops, but you know, clear interference with Thomas Ahern as he's trying to catch that. And, and you know, he's had a really solid start at Seppi's time. Five, stay there. A tremendous prospect. Made his debut against the Dragons in November. First start then against Zebra. And this one has gone against the throw that good read and a good take. Box kick then from Duvanaga. Plenty of time for Coombs. Now uh, can he spot a little bit of space? Risky pass almost from Just a knock on. Flannery, but it's gone forward off a of Benetton hand. And certainly the early on. signs inside the eight, first eight or nine minutes are that both sides are keen to try and play plenty of rugby tonight which is good yeah absolutely it's great the evening for young players should have no in inhibitions and look to be positive we just see that the, i don't think that's really under thrown it's just a really good read as you said and we see here his first instinct is to is to counter attack and then throw the pass and you know flannery he's trying to get that ball into the outside channel probably lucky just going to stand and start here on this so that could have been intercepted but uh, again you can't blame you know young players and trying to try and express themselves and, and play with a little bit more, bit, bit more wit well, there's a queue, isn't there, of uh, really exciting prospects at fly half and at fullback. Jake Flannery, Five. interesting to see over the course of the next 18 months exactly where he fits with uh, Ben Healy and Jack Crowley and others. Obviously, Joey Carberry on the back in harness, which is great to see as well. Frank, what's the picture on your side? OK. Yeah, yeah, over here then. Yeah. I like that referee in there. It's a really good scrum contest, and often you see referees, they guess straight away once there's been a bit of a whip wheel, but she, she's asking for the reset, talking to Frank Murphy, seeing what he saw, and um, giving both teams the benefit of the doubt, because, you, you know, it's a huge part of the game, this, uh, this contest at the scrum time, not just, um, you know, as a way of restarting the game. If you have dominance there, you should be allowed benefit from it, and... Uh, you know, I really like that style of refereeing. Crouch! Frank Murphy on the far side. As you look, Robin Sullivan on this side, the ARs tonight. Set! A little bit early, perhaps, from Benison, but they uh, managed to get away with it initially, and now Patterson's under pressure, albeit with the advantage. Jack O'Donoghue is aware of that now. And Alex to carry himself. Advantage, one 
Little kick through now, inviting the run of Conway. Oh, he's always so good at judging when is the best time to try and gather that bouncing, hobbling ball, and he did so there again. Brilliantly now, good, typically robust carry by Thomas O'Hearn and taken on now by Keenan Knox. This is a good gain of ground through the forwards from Munster, and on they go now with Jack O'Sullivan. 12th minute of the game and inside that Benetton 22 and the opportunity to go through Flannery now and through the hands again, Klute now. The physical contest inside the 22 was good from the Benetton point of view and they were well set defensively and they get the put into the scrum for the knock-on from the open side flanker. Yeah, unfortunate there, Clute, he's a, he's a specialist jackler, he's much better as a defender rather than an attacker, but obviously with his system he spent some time in the outside channel and just there, Scrumbling. ball gets stripped from him, uh, from Riera, and again, I, I like the way Munster played in penalty advantage there, a little grubber kick through, Conway did brilliant to gather it, and then you saw the likes of Thomas O'Hearn coming onto the ball yep. at pace and getting over the gain line, which did create a side opportunity on the outside. And feet underneath you, keep your feet underneath you. Feet. Yeah. Yes, he's endured a, a mixed couple of years. Chris Clute in recent times, very, very prominent back in the 2018-19 season, started 17 matches and that fell to seven last season. Bernard says he's uh, pretty much out in front in terms of the turnover stats, 15 turnovers this season. Yeah, he was very effective before the new interpretations. I mean, the way the game's been refereed now, it's ideal for someone like him, probably just needs to, to get a run of games. Set. So many options in that back row. The personnel selected for the final next week will be very interesting, just how they balance out. Ball there for Duvanaka all the way back to Tommaso Allen. Coombs watching this one. It's another good kick from the Benetton fly half, and wisely perhaps Coombs elects to go early. Put his side on the front foot if they can manufacture something now, maybe into Liam O'Connor. Good solid tackle coming in from Filippo Alonghi. Monster go again up to halfway. Patterson now poised and ready. This time it's the boot of Hanrahan and it's the chase of Conway and he's always so good in these situations. Decent kick from Hanrahan but just enough time for Hayward to adjust his position and watch that all the way. Savayara now almost dismissing the challenge from Paddy Patterson but he did enough to snare the winger. Did the scrum half. That's Alonghi again. Duvanaga. In front hold 2-5, wait. Coombs again with plenty of time from Tommaso Allen's kick and now two on this near side switching back inside the scannel Coombs into contact <laughs> Liam O'Connor once more use it back Patterson to poised for the box kick this time under a little bit of pressure from Ellie Schneiman as indeed Hayward was but he did really well to skip away from Liam Coombs JJ Hanrahan putting his shoulder to the wheel there. Use it! Petanelli and the number eight on the carry, and once they're not rolling away, trapped in there was Kane Hurley. A smart bit of play from from Benetton there, trapping, trapping Hurley. They're only playing a phase to get ready to box kick and just you know, probably a little bit of lack of inexperience, over-enthusiasm, just gets trapped at the wrong side there and, you know, you can't show that picture to the referee and expect to, to get away with it. But, uh, yeah, I think he's just trying to make a big impact. And you see here some of the, some of the hits going in. Uh, you know, I've been impressed with Benetton's defence so far. Once they're trying to play, but they're, they're nice and physical, good tackle tech and, and driving them back uh, in, in the contact. Ernie Herbst, formerly of the Blue Bulls and a South African under-20s player, his opposite number on the Munster side. We were just talking about Keane Hurley, only 20. He's played five times for the Munster A's this season. And they do have that nice sprinkling of experience in and around them. The likes of Jack O'Donoghue there in your picture, albeit he's only 27, he's just played so much rugby. Yeah, absolutely, and there's lots of experience on the bench as well. With like Sir Reese Marshall and, and Tommy up, O'Donnell uh, and Matt Gatter to come on if the game, uh, you know, goes against them a little bit. But you would expect this team to settle down as as, 
as they build a little bit of cohesion um, and you know they should be good enough to, to, to win this game without having to, to empty the bench in terms of experience but and also a couple of young young guys who are happy to see a little bit more of like Sir Roman Solano um, you know and uh, Ben Daly as well yes five of the eight starters in the pack are 22 or younger Chris Clute 30 is the elder statesman Play on. Hmm? No. Keep going. A little bit of uh, attention required for Jack O'Sullivan. Let's He's go. another super, superbly talented player. Um, was unbelievably good at under 20s level. Has just had a couple of injuries as well, which has probably stalled his his development. But I'm really looking forward to see him uh, tonight as the game progresses. Yes, captain. His. Uh, press side in 2017 to a monster senior cup triumph no straight is fine it's knocked on at the back the, um, oh, cool. no. yeah. sorry yeah, a little frustrate Marco Bortolami is the, the forwards coach, lineup coach. You know, the lift, the quality of the lift isn't, isn't great. And obviously, that transfer then to the seven for the breakout play just isn't as fluid as you would expect. Crouch! Manuel Zuliani wearing number seven for Benetton tonight on that open side flank. Made 23 tackles last week against Cardiff. Unfortunately for him, his side missed far too many yes, tackles nine. and were uh, well beaten by Cardiff, but it's been a story of their season, really. Backwards. And that's good nuisance value from Duval Duvanaga, putting Jack O'Sullivan under huge pressure, and not allowing clean ball. Patterson to this short side then. Yeah, you're good. Use it! Off they go in chase of... Patterson's aerial kick now. Esposito took it well, took it physically. Good contest against Coombs, who was coming in at pace. Here they go once again with Petagnelli. Duvignanaga with Tommaso oh. Allen wanting to change the point of the attack. Drop one right onto the touchline on this near side. He's judged that absolutely expertly, as he very often does. Such a talented player. Yeah, that's brilliant because. Thanks, Coombs had chased the box kick and he hadn't been able to get back and the backfield wasn't as organised as Munster would have liked even though it had gone two or three phases and just the ability to change the point of contact there and we see that pressure at the back from the nine interestingly the MLR, the American League have changed some rules and um, they're actually going to ban the number nine uh, from being able to pressure the back of the scrum they think it'll open up more attacking play but there you see the benefit of, of putting pressure on your opposite number Clean ball this time. They're executed from Ahern. Back foot. No. And this time they go to Scanlon to exit. And he thumps that down to the 10 meter line. Yeah, and again, really clean, efficient, no real stress or fuss. Just good lineup ball, using O'Sullivan to crash okay. it up, and then good. obviously going back to Scanlon's left foot, which is a, a, a great tool to have. And, you know, he comfortably brings the play up to, as far as the as the 40. Yeah, and that'll be pleasing for the coaching ticket. We heard you on Van Graan say, look, we want to see some heads up rugby, go and play and try and give the younger players in the team confidence. But then straight away, Jack O'Donoghue in his pre-match interview said, look, you know, set piece time and stuff. You want to be rigid and go through your set plays and, and work your way into the game. That's as, almost as important, if not more so. Yeah, absolutely. And you want to get a bit of territory and be able to play on the front foot. So how you exit is a huge part of that. And, and they've looked really composed and, and efficient in that area so far. Nine. Not a huge amount of forward movement as Munster look to stop it at source. Away they go now with Luca Morisi. That was aimed for a long game. It was almost intercepted. It was a good contest. It was a hurl putting his body in there, getting into the passing channel, making it difficult for the tight head prop. Yeah, great defence by Ahern. He, he read it. Um, this was a late switch back, and you know he, he got out of the defensive line and forced the pressure. And uh, yeah, because it was good mall play. You see it here. 
Kearney just Let's jumps go, out of the line a bit, goes for the interception, and you know, unfortunately for for Benetton, they knock it on a contact. But a, a nice defensive read from Thomas Hearn. Yep, just here, that's the mark there. Just 21, the man from Ardmore yeah, and Waterford. He's got every string to his bow. Let's go I saw that fabulous scintillating try he scored for Ireland at Musgrave Park in the under 20s match against Scotland. Crouch! Bind! Interesting opening quarter of the game. And certainly, the scrum has been a little bit of a flashpoint. Okay. Here's the mark. I want you to find the gaps and hold that space. Into the gaps and keep that space. Yes? Okay, thanks, Robert. Yeah, it seems as if Munster are putting a lot of weight on at the buying stage and, and they're taking Benetton on, on, back on their heels and Benetton like that sort of backing away. Um, it's important that they're able to deal with that weight and, and, you know, are steady going in because I think if they back away again here, it could be a free kick. Bind! Set! That's much better. So when it goes from Patterson, Munster have lost that though. Straight boot back on the Benetton side and Petagnelli quickly up from the base of the scrum to try and take full advantage. Good delivery from Duval Duvanaga and now Benetton as they come on the front foot with numbers so, so dangerous. And they go back to the big engine room carriers. Ernie Herbst, the South African, and recycled quickly. Still inside that monster 22 with Baravelli, the hooker. Now they go again to Alonghi. Jack O'Donoghue with a tackle, but they're still making progress. Benetton here. Munster putting bodies on the line. Is there a little bit of a gap there for Duvenaga to try and find his way through? Rocking no Guerra then no takes it on. Jack O'Donoghue's got to take his hands away. Heeds the call of the referee, Holly Davidson, and Duvenaga lines up his targets again. This time it's Nicola Quaglio, the vastly experienced loose head. Count 14 times for the Azuri, then it went in behind Ellie Snyman, but they're playing with the advantage. Tommaso Allen so dangerous in these kind of scenarios. Esposito now standing up as man Coombs and gets beyond them. They got the off out away somehow. Oh, that's outrageously brilliant play, and they're over for the try. Oh, what a try that is for Benetton. Absolutely superb with the advantage, and didn't they seize the advantage? The point of attack changed by Tommaso Allen all the way through the hands. Esposito involved. They recycled it, and in goes Divil Duvenager for the first try of the evening. Yeah, and it came from the scrum. I think Munster aren't under pressure scrum, but you just see there it hits the, the second rows and bounces back up. And from this, they don't really let Munster recover. Great carry off the back by the eight. And Hayward came onto the line really hard, and here you just see switching the point of contact. They have the penalty advantage, and he breaks the first tackle, and then that ability to offload. Offload again, great support play, and a third time, that's class uh, support play and inside by Duvenage. You know, but he is such a good player. He he got them over the gain line, sniping around around the fringes with four runners coming on, and eventually, you know, they go to wit, and that's that's the Benetton that, that that made him a team to watch because, you know, they do take chances and they do play on their feet. Great pickup from Rieri, and then the offload at the finish from Petagnelli to Duvenage. He looks good, we're right behind that from Tommaso Allen, and the two points added. So the halfbacks combined to see the Italians lead at Thomond Park in the 24th minute, seven points to nil, and it's well, well worth watching again. Lovely support playing hands. It yeah, just fights to get away from the touchline as well, opens up that five-metre channel, and, and again, it's just that ability and communication from behind to trust the ball player to leave it up for you and come on to that pace. Very hard to defend against that. You see Tommaso Allen in those situations, as soon as he sees the referee play the advantage, his eyes light up, his head is up, and he's looking to see exactly where the weak link is. Giovanni Petagnelli has carried well inside the opening 25 minutes here. On the chest. Hold, hold. It's a six, six stop. That's a very good kick again. Monster with the time and space to go early, Hanrahan now. And that's going to be a penalty for the high tackle. Seven. Roy Scannell coming through. 
Now, can they take advantage? Coombs just clips one over the top, and we'll go back for the penalty. Very clear and... High. Number seven. I was just going to say, up to that, including that clearance kick, albeit that Munster went early, they've been very, very clean and efficient. Yeah, no, they have, and, but just that's, that's so sloppy. Just after you've scored a try, you've caught the kick off, um, you don't find touch, or you do find touch, but it, it's, it doesn't find a stand, so Munster played quickly, and you know from that, then obviously they, they forced the penalty and you now have a chance to score straight away with, with a shot of goal from JJ. Seven points done, and no surprise to see Munster look to get themselves on the board here. 25 minutes in. Five wins in a row now in the Pro 14 since that defeat to Leinster. Most recently, of course, the 28 points to 10 win against the Scarlets last week, scoring four tries in conditions that could scarcely be uh, any more different than they are tonight. Hanran, of course, tried in midfield last week in the experiment to allow Joey Carberry start the game and perhaps offer a, a dual playmaker and take a little bit of the responsibility off the returning number 10, but back in his usual position of fly half tonight. And if there is a puff of breeze and it's no more than that at Tobin Park, it's blowing just gently into the face of Hanran. He struck that very nicely indeed. And so Hanrahan punishes the indiscretion of Manuel Zuliani with the penalty kick and Munster on the board in the 27th minute. Yeah, I think it's the right decision. Take the points, settle down. Munster have, you know, have been on top probably in terms of possession and territory, but obviously just that sucker punch of, of a try that they conceded. Um, you know, and now they take the kick off and just rebuild. And, and, and I think the longer the game goes on, the better Munster will get. four-point advantage for the Italians in a game where possession 27 minutes in is exactly 50-50. Patterson from inside the 22, right tight to the tram lines, well watched by Hayward. He's so dangerous that he's elusive and good friend in that situation. I think Patterson had stolen that legally, but then Benetton retrieve the situation. Duvanaga now to Tomaso Allen. Can they manufacture an overlap over on that far side with the ever dangerous Taviara lurking out wide in the winger's channel now back inside Baravelli up against his opposite Bantle. number, German Barron. Not rolling, you're rolling into a nine. Not quick enough or not uh, the correct geography, maybe going north south rather than east to west in terms of the exit there, German Barron. Yeah, and again, it's just experience of Dubaga. He makes that look worse than it is. He he trips over what? trips over Baron as, as he as he exits the the back of the rook and, and buys the penalty. And and again, you know, no surprise. They're happy to have a shot at goal here. Tommaso Allen's great goal kicker, but this is brilliant from Hayward. You know, Munster be disappointed with a kick chase there. It was from a, an organised setup. Poor miss tackle by by Thomas Ahern, and and that gets Benetton on the front foot. And we just see from here, you know, the ball is slowed down. Munster have got reorganised. This is a, a you know, a pretty normal situation, just chop and top, uh, but unfortunately gets stuck the wrong side. Sixty-two caps for his country night. Tommaso Allen for Italy, that is, of course, having played. Uh, all the age grade rugby with Scotland, but he hasn't measured that one. A little bit of a let off then. You'd expect him well within his compass, certainly. Yeah, that's a big, a big let off for Munster and, and be very frustrating for, for Benetton. You feel they have to take advantage of those points when they're on offer just to try and build a bit of a score because, um, you know, I'd imagine the Munster will get a lot more attacking opportunities. Conway off and chase got to the pitch of the ball really well he, he looked second best there albeit didn't gather a team he managed to get it back on the monster side and here they come now with Jack O'Donoghue up against Nicola Quaglio 
Knocks and now Hanrahan out the back is Scandal. Loops one out to Coombs and back inside is Klute. On the body, not on the ball. Joaquin Riera tried to rip it free. Patterson wants more this time to Ahern. All action from the towering yeah, second row. Half an hour in. Front and centre. There's his second row partner. Kane Hurley getting involved, and now there's a little bit of space for O'Donoghue, and he accelerates through it, and he got his pass away toward Conway, but that was clever play from Taviara. Good cover from the winger, positioned himself perfectly. Hold, hold, stop. Good acceleration from Jack O'Donoghue. He's trying to exploit that little bit of a, a gap in the rear guard of Benetton defence. Now Klute. Not held in the tackle. Good robust carry from the open side. Right in front, hold. Nine stop, four. And uh, this time doesn't get a huge distance on it. Is that knock one, Frank? That's a yeah. yeah, you can see that JJ is starting to favour um, Andrew Conway's side with those contestables, and they've got good returns out of the last one they got back cleanly and led to a great off foot from, from Thomas O'Hearn and this is just seeing them getting to wit great pace from Jack Dunne who won one on one with Duvenage but unfortunately he just gets stuck or the ball gets stuck in a passing channel and he doesn't get to connect with it with his winger but then the second one is another great contestable and, and Conway gets up and there's a little knock on in the air we just see it here just that pressure he puts on and Frank Murphy you know feels it's gone forward and, and once you get a, a scrum in a good position to attack off but it's a big super strength of, of Conway's game, his ability in the air. He's not the, the tallest man, but his, his bravery and his timing is phenomenal. Crouch. Bind. Limited game time, of course, this season for Andrew Conway. Good to see him start tonight. Just his sixth start of the season yet to register a try this campaign. Eight tries in 11 games last season. So prolific, so dependable. No! Often underrated, but certainly not by those that play alongside him, that's for sure. First knock almost from a monster hand. Yeah, so look, Patterson's trying to open up that space where the, the first defender for, for Benetton stands by just carrying across at the second defender and leaving a ball back really in inside for Jack O'Donoghue. Really but uh, unfortunately, just in contact, you just see it here. Just drags out and gives a little blind pass back inside to Jack O'Donoghue. Good defence from, from Benetton, in fairness, they close the space, but Munster are just trying to vary their options from an attacking point of view and not just uh, play into the third defender, but attack all different areas of the field. Yeah. That's good variety and a, a little breather, perhaps, for one or two in there. Filippo Longhi is receiving some attention. Duvernaga, who scored the only try so far, much travelled uh, South African, 32 now, a few seasons in France with uh, Perpignan, two spells with uh, Western Province and the Stormers, either side of his uh, sojourn Pardon? in Europe. He was an excellent player in, in Perpignan, the top 14. He was consistently one of the best nines um, in yeah. a team who had okay, a, so a difficult season, a couple of okay. seasons, but uh, no surprise that. Benetton went for him, and he's, he's been a That's really good set. player That's there, it. either playing every week or else mentoring some of the younger nines. No, I know. Let's go! A shot of Jake Flannery there, ever Let's present go. in that Let's Ireland under 20s Grand Slam team a couple of years ago. Crouch! Bind! Yes. Set! <laughs> Now Duvenaga kicking after delayed put into that scrummage. Hold. Difficult angle for Red. Flannery. Wait. Wait. Pumps him back into oh, Benson no. territory. Esposito now. Well, that was a high pass. Offering up the opportunity for Hanrahan to get involved, and Munster trying to drive over the ball here. Ball is out. Knock on. Ball the was section. there. That was unfortunate from uh, Jack O'Sullivan. No advantage. It's lost forward on the ground here by Red. Was there to be got at. 
Yeah, that was a fortune for Munster. Great hit from, from Hanrahan, as you, as you said, Connor. The ball hung in the air a little bit too long, and, and JJ sense blood, but from the impact tackle, you see it here. He has to jump for it. JJ gets good leg drive, takes control, and from that they go for the for the uh, turnover. Yeah, and unfortunately, ball. as they're ripping the ball, I think Jack O'Sullivan just knocked it on. But um, yeah, Benetton Let's left the, their front row in the backfield there from that kickback. Uh, it looked a bit ropey for a while, but he's Perdido uh, got back and, and, and got the hooker out of trouble. Yes, Pesito, as you said, in the side in the absence of Monte Iwani, but a, a talented player in his own right. 21 Italy caps to his credit, the last of those coming against Ireland before the World Cup. Number one, clean gauge. Not too early for Liam O'Connor, so the free kick does come. Quite a bit of skullduggery on the engagement so far this evening. Now Coombs has been rock solid under these. Hold. Good distance on the kick, had enough to force Tommaso Allen to scurry Stay back. There. Stay. Down from inside the 22. That's a good repasse from Flannery. Good strike. Interestingly, when you know a lot of teams when they win a free kick like that at scrum time, they go Red for a scrum again. Uh, Benetton didn't want a bar of it. They, it's like they felt they they got the rub of the green there and <laughs> the, the pack backed off pretty quickly and left it up to Thomas Allen to put up a, a Gary on. And uh, in fairness, they won. You know, they won the battle really because now they have a line out a little bit further up the field and where the scrum was first. But uh, yeah, I think there's going to be a couple more uh, swings in in terms of the referee interpretation of the scrum. Ball. One on that occasion by Ali Snyman from Barry Valley's delivery. Oh, sorry. again asking questions of Coombs. He's come up with plenty of answers so far. Double tackle then coming in between Zarbi and Tommaso Allen. Monster recycle and there. Good co combination play linking up between the forwards. Hurley now needs to look after the ball into contact, which he does. Patterson. Good little half break from Patterson. He might yet make it. Well, it was a three quarters in the end. Not a quite Not held. a full one. Nor was he held. He did well. The scrum half taken on now by Liam O'Connor again. Keenan Knox this time. Hasn't played since he got 30 minutes in the Connacht game in January. Now Scandal linking up with Hanran, ball over the top is on for Conway. Assessing what's ahead of him, kicks it ahead on the bounce. Oh, Conway plays a little bit of football and Munster almost got the break of it. Challenge coming in from Alex McHenry, forces the knock on and that was good invention, a good creativity using the full expanse of the Dumbin Park pitch again. Yeah, really good, uh, uh, particularly this little interchange on the left-hand side, started with, with with Patterson, you know, he's only small, but he looks so strong, dynamic, and that gets him go forward, and then the forward started to take it on, and eventually they go to Witt, a little loop play with, with JJ, over the top to Conway, and he, he puts an intelligent little chip over the top, and from here it's a great tackle from uh, McHenry to, to force the turnover and give Munster a really good field position. But Conway's so accurate with that, he gets... He gets the ball in behind. That's a nightmare for your backfield. And unfortunately, when he tries to kick it through again, um, he just finds Hayward. But great hit there for McHenry, who hasn't really got a lot of ball, but is a very talented player. It seems the obvious thing to say, but Andrew Conway, so intelligent, his decision making under pressure is, is so, so good. Okay. Alex McHenry started the game against yep. Edinburgh here in October, I think it was. Great, thank you very much. Having made his debut back in 2019 against the Knights opponents, Benison. This is Patterson, he just sees her a little bit short, there's a bit of space around Pillar, and he has the speed to get back inside. Good fend, stays strong in contact and gets an extra couple of yards uh, out of uh, looking to use his forework to find soft shoulders. You know, but well, that's a great way to, to get your team going forward just outside your own 22. And um, it's nice to show a little bit of variety in his game and possibly maybe done his ankle ligaments but hopefully he can he can continue on and, and get some game time now with Connor away great Casey away as well yeah, full credit to him getting escaping not just escaping the clutches of Ellie Snyman but putting the uh, 
huge second row to ground. Nick McCarthy is the option, of course, on the bench for Johan van Graan. Let's hope he's not needed just yet because Patterson very much to the pitch of the game. He looks to be enjoying himself out there. He's not sure, is he just giving him an extra moment to try and discern whether he's going to be able to continue. Be disappointing to see him have to leave the fray, but that looks like the outcome, unfortunately. Great, yeah, what a great replacement to have, Nick, Nick McCarthy. Um, huge amount of experience going back to, to Leinster over the summer. Um, but yeah, he's he's got a great passing game and, and will bring similar tempo to, to Patterson. Back back, okay? so disappointment for Patterson is opportunity for Nick McCarthy, his 20th appearance. Straight into the action now. Two minutes to go in the first half. This is a great opportunity for Munster to, um, you know, to finish the half on a strong and, and hopefully get a try. Bind! Yes, it's been very evenly balanced, really, over the course of the opening half here. Just embellished by that wonderful try. Sequence of offloads and support play. Deserving of the try for Duvenaga, but now he can muster. Sees the initiative and potentially the lead going into half time. Flannery now to Coombs, not once or twice, but on the third time he manages to gather it. Now McCarthy needs quick ball, and the forwards are queuing up. Kluta at the head of the queue, and support also from Jack O'Sullivan. And this time it's a little slower, but it won't go too far. It'll go into the clutches of Kean Hurley. Barron is over. Ahern this time providing the forwards with the ammunition. Klute again just sniping around the fringes now on these one-out carries and McCarthy. Leaves it to his pack of forwards. A little bit of space there. I think it's Ahern as well in there. O'Sullivan now. Benetton player over it, can't get his hands on the ball. It's there for McCarthy again. There was a little bit of space out wide. Oh, that's a lovely little exchange of passes. And Munster get in with a try. The midfield combination off the awareness of Nick McCarthy of where the space was at scrum half. The switch from Scannell to Alex McHenry, and he gets his first try in Munster colours. Yeah, again, it comes from the set piece to go to wit. Probably comes a little bit frustrated. The pass just not really out in front of him so he can take his man on. But the most important thing is they look after the ball. You see it here. It just has to check his run for a second. And Benetton go off their feet at that breakdown. And from here, the pack took over, started to grind towards the post. And you watch the way McCarthy just whips that pass out. A speed of ball to Scannell. Gets his hands through contact. Okay. And a great support line from, from McHenry. So... Okay. Great interplay there from, from two players who want to spend a huge amount of time playing together, but just a nice level of understanding. And with that rush defence from outside, there's a hole in, 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 on the inside for, for McHenry to get through. Great time to score and to seize the initiative right at the end of the half. The half which was uh, delicately poised, but that little combination it. play between 12 and 13 and the co conversion, the Julie pop between the uprights from JJ Hanrahan. We'll see Munster go into the sheds, leading at half-time at Thoman Park. It's Munster 10, Benetton 7. Welcome back to Thoman Park, all set to go then for the second 40 minutes, and it's the home side Munster turning around with this slender advantage from half-time, courtesy in no Hang small on. part to that try from Alex McHenry right at the end of an entertaining opening half Same on. which Benetton led for a long period following that really brilliant try from Duval Duvenaga but full credit to Munster this inexperienced and untried and untested Munster side for getting their noses back in front in the dying embers of the half turning around 10-7 in front one try apiece and the game very much in the balance Nick McCarthy in for the unfortunate Paddy Patterson forced off with an injury in that first half. Now, can they pick up where they left off from half time, really on the front foot? 
perspective and I've an eye to Tommaso oh, Allen. Fight. We've seen plenty yeah, of that fight. right boot of the Benetton fly half in the first half. And quite a little bit one, too from Jake Flannery. Hayward. And McCarthy's got a little bit of ground to make up there. Red in front hold. Hold. You won't find touch with that clearance kick from inside the Monster 22. Hayward, so dangerous in these situations, gets his hands free, gets the pass away, and but it's a making groin through their inside centre. Luca Morisi. Good challenge from Scanner. Slowed any potential attack down, as did that wayward pass from Alonghi, I think it was, the tight head prop. Charge. Charged on from McCarthy's kick and now Flannery's into a narrow corridor of two or three Benetton players. The clean out did arrive just in time. Munster just need to reorganize a little bit. Use it! Protection for McCarthy from Keenan Knox gives him the space to send up that box kick, dropping just beyond halfway. Good contest, went forward off Hayward, I think. And yeah, that'll be a scrum to Munster. A little bit scrappy in the opening two minutes. Yeah, very, very scrappy. And um, some inaccurate kicking, some some block downs, and, and three or four knock ons thrown into it. And you know, Tom Sahern was disappointed he didn't get hold that. You see it coming back here off Hayward, doesn't do great. And, Thomas Ahern, that speed, the speed that he has, if he if he catches that flush, you know, he, he could have made some some great yards. And that's what I'm looking forward to seeing. We've seen his offload, we've seen him, his close in carries, his line out play, but I'd love to see him in a little bit of space in the out, outer channels. He's got real pace and really long levers to be able to keep the ball alive in contact. Confirmation of the switch in that Benetton front row. And Thomas Gallo in for Nicola Quaglio. Find. Yes, like so many of his Set. peers, Thomas O'Hearn, despite his six foot nine inch frame, he's so athletic. Great acceleration and quite nimble. Yes. Good set of hands on him, too. Scannell this time. Now, what about the bounce for Conway? Just didn't quite go his way. Only half a yard or so off. Another demonstration of that varied attack. Much of the kicking in the game, as you said, Bernard, has been pretty good. It has been pretty good. And again, that's worth it worth to go the way Benetton defend with their wing really high. There is space in behind. I think Conway Cody could have been a little bit wider to start off with, so he's coming onto the into the ball rather than trying to drift drift out to because the bounce is always going to take it away. But nice variation from uh, from Munster in, in terms of their set piece attack. Baravelli, the Rosario born six times cap Puma hooker. Tommaso Allen slings one out into that Benetton midfield. Ball was loose, and who better to scoop it up and hoover up possession? Chris Klute. Did that go forward? I don't think it did off Alex McHenry. Just took his hand out of the way. Penalty advantage coming here and Munster aware of that now might just try something out of the box of tricks out the back door to Flannery and now Scannell, not too many options this side, Conway cutting back inside, can he see a chink of light? He so often can, the offload was good, McCarthy now it's going to require a little bit of support, just delayed that ever so slightly to allow the support to arrive, Conway was first there, Hurley on the floor now, taken on by Keenan Knox. Good Take run by step. McCarthy, wasn't it? He almost made there on his, on his own. No advantage. Yeah, long advantage, none coming. Back we go for the penalty. Benetton player off his feet. Yeah, great turnover uh, from, from Clute, and he uh, he straight away got the ball uh, out to, to the outside challenge. Good carry from Coombs. We just see here, you know, great line out okay. delivery, you know, unorthodox, but arms. great delivery. They got up, up the middle of the field, you know, using, using the back row to crash it up. Um, but just Clute, just the ball just out, he's in like a flash, brilliant from him, R rise the challenge and, and then they, they obviously go out to, to Conway here. And this is what you don't want against Conway defensively, him coming against the grain, picks off the front five forwards and, and a great offload to McCarthy. 
A three point advantage, and Munster electing on this occasion to use their attacking line out. Yeah, and Armand looked good early in the game. There hasn't really been many opportunities the, the second 20 minutes of the, of the first half, but it, interesting to see if they can turn it into advantage here using their young pack. And a lot of movement in there, wasn't there? Two or three decoys and dummies. Eventually, they elected to go towards the tail to a hurt. Initially, they made good progress. Penalty advantage again. McHenry. Trying to use his strength then. Oh, Keenan knocks for the line. Munster don't need the advantage of the penalty that was coming because they seized the initiative with the try. The 21 year old tight head prop gets over from close range using his power for his first Munster try. Yeah, that was very impressive actually. Really good power, but also great latch from Jack O'Donoghue. Great line out. Get them all set. Look how quickly they, they build back towards the touchline. And you can see Benetton are all kinds of trouble. And, and from the advantage, you don't slow it down. Good carry by McHenry, nice and physical. And then around a the corner with Knox. And watch this latch from Jack O'Donoghue. You know, still driving him through contact. And, you know, great power from, from the tight head. But, you know, really good play from O'Donoghue as well to support him. You just see here, he continues that leg drive all the way through contact. And, you know, whatever, 160 stone, or 160 kilos against, against 100 is always going to get over. And the simple task of adding the extras from JJ Hanrahan. And what do we know? Almost eight minutes into the second half, and Monster just turning the screw now, it seems, on this Benetton side. Yeah, and again, you just see it comes from really quick ball, good carrying by McHenry. Obviously, they have the penalty advantage, but so many teams slow it down there. The nine puts his foot on it, they start to build uh, their pick and go game, and Monster just wanted to play a little bit quicker and get rewarded for it. And so a night of firsts in the try scoring stakes for first Alex McHenry and now Keenan Knox into the Munster try scoring ranks. That's good awareness of where the space was and good execution too. Not really anything JJ Hanrahan alone in that backfield could do to cover that kind of ground. Yeah, that's a, that's a great kick, and just after, a, obviously, a ropey five or six minutes conceding just before half-time and just after half-time, you know, Benetton now, you need their experienced okay. players to, to make sure this game doesn't get away on them. You know, they've had lots of good moments in it and, and just play a little bit of territory now and, 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 and you know, shut the gate in terms of letting, conceding some more points. Yeah, it's poor kick initially, wasn't it, from Hanrahan, and then he was exposed as he went to the other side. Hayward exploited that, that's loose ball, but again, it's picked oh, off by no, 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 no. Stay there. Tavia. Who has he got in his gun sights? It was Nick McCarthy, but McCarthy did very well just to be a speed bump and a little bit more than that, to be fair to him. Thomas Gallo gets it away to Jaden Hayward. But Tavia to his left-hand side, elected to kick and Monster profit from it. Hurley now, that's a really good carry from the lock forward. Use it! Plenty of support in those tight exchanges too. Monster's pack working in unison. And as Bernard was saying, they seem to be growing in confidence as the game goes on and getting better. Feeling their way into the game, but this Benetton attack will attack from anywhere if the opportunity is there, as we saw in the first half of their try. Esposito back behind his own 10 meter line. Duvanaka. Monster short here. And they do have numbers on this near side if they can orchestrate it, but they can't from Patagnelli. That's gone forward. Yeah, and I, I'd give Conway massive credit there. There was a, a big overlap for, for Benetton. He sensed the danger and he came in and. and Left the last two men on the outside, just smash man and ball and forced the, the error. So great defence with Conway, and that's the experience um, he has and being able to read those situations um, on the edge. Yeah. A couple of changes in the front row. Yeah. Thomas Baravelli and Filippo Olonghi going off. Cornel Els and Tiziano Pasquale okay. coming in. 15. So all change in the front row. You 15? 
And a change on the Munster side as well sees Jake Flannery called ashore after 50 minutes. It's scrum, it's forward pass, yeah. Good. <whistles> Same on. Just move it back here. Flannery looked composed, uh, I thought, you know, very comfortable yeah. at, at this level. Um, yeah. yeah, and, you know, so I'm looking forward to seeing him more play, uh, play more at 10. Yeah, yeah. Great. It's going to be such an interesting oh. battle between him, uh, Ben Healy and Jack Crowley uh, to see who's the, going to be the pretender to the likes of JJ and um, obviously Joey. Yes, yeah. yeah, a pretty decent cue to have. Good to see Matt Gallagher back in to get some game time, a player who's struggled with injury. Shoulder injury back in November after a run of games. Scored a couple of tries, good tries in... Newport yeah. against the Dragons. Well, we were bound to get a strong penalty sooner or later, really, weren't we? You're on the shoulder and then you've lost your bind. Yep. Yeah, Benetton yep. have obviously brought on the replacement front row and just struggling to deal with the with the pressure from the, from this Munster 8 who are really building into the game. You know, we spoke about their age, but their set piece has been rock solid. Bar that one scrum that, you know, bounced back off the second row, their line has been really tidy as well. And you just see here the pressure right on the referee's side. Um, the tie head just can't ha handle the weight and go straight to ground. <laughs> We've only had six penalties in the game. That's the fourth conceded by Benetton to Munsters two. Which is pretty good going, 51 minutes in. Just the one steal Benetton have made on the Munster throw. Safe, secure, dependable to Hurley at the front. O'Connor in danger of losing his shorts, but Munster are rumbling on around the corner. Cries of change of bind. You can hear it's probably the Munster captain, Jack O'Donoghue. Holly Davidson agrees. Munster penalty. Changing bind straight onto ball carrier. And this time it's Ernie Herbst, I think, the lock forward. Yeah, so the whole the mall has to move through the plane of the touchline. Number four, changing bind to the mall. So back to the corner we go again. Yeah, again, really good referee in there. Uh, you know, it's, it's so hard to referee them all, but, but Holly Davison just nice sees the Benetton infringement, Bassi. communicates it clearly to the Benetton captain, yep. and uh, yeah, it's great to have that no, no, level of clarity right from referee to captain. Advantage early. And too early this time, so it's another penalty advantage. And this mall is uh, causing Benison increasing problems. Are they set to be punished by a third monster down. try? That's what? Momentum stalled momentarily. Baron has it. Little kick over. Conway on the chase. Followed back by Esposito, but back we go for the penalty, and there might be something a little bit more from Holly Davidson here. Repeat Captain. infringements in that five-metre channel. That's now two quick mall infringements. Early and changing mind. Okay. No more at the mall. At the mall. Yeah. Okay. No, no, back and go. Um, uh, warning, warning, uh, on the mall. The beat of the D. Come on. No, no. Yeah, it's good. Gina, Gina. No, no, they go, they go! Time on. Yeah, if you want. So no further sanction Wait on this call. occasion, but a stern warning for uh, Ivald Duvanaga to take back to his players and communicate them. For going early before the jumper is back down. And because the infringement was from the from the line-out straight away, they don't have to kick it out, they just go straight back to the reset, and I'd say he'll go for Hearn again. No, that's disappointing, isn't it? Yeah, it's a big let off, and Baron Strong's been re really good. I think he just uh, maybe just didn't Captain. follow through on his technique there. He could see that they weren't going to contest, and just drifts down the inside shoulder. Let's go, let's go. Yep, both sides. So, prima, prima. a big let off. Yes, Benetton can clear their lines and exit efficiently here. Keep themselves in the game, really. You feel it 17 points to seven. 55 minutes Crunch. in, had they conceded another seven pointer there. Well, Bind. out of the contest, surely. 
Munster very much in the ascendancy since we've restarted. And they look to be in the ascendancy there at scrum time as well. So to exit via the number eight as quickly as possible, Patanelli was a wise decision. Another penalty here, though the penalty count ratcheting up. Ball's not out, seven. Mr. Offside, Chris Clute in particular. Yeah, so Clute got away with one earlier, but uh, this time it comes from the scrum. In fairness, the ball is, doesn't really get back to the eight feet, so really good drive from Benetton. And from here, you just see Clute, he, you know, he might have an argument the ball was out, but um, yeah, he'd probably check with the referee first to make sure and, and gives Benetton an easy opportunity to, to relieve some pressure. Time off. 14. Rotuva Taviara is going off. Seven clean breaks for Munster, just the one so far for Bannerton. Time on. Leonardo Sarto is in in place of Taviara. Juvenaga kicking, keeping Andrew Conway honest, and he watched that really well because he had to readjust his position there in the backfield. Ball was drifting in field. The sunshine and spring like conditions of earlier on today have given way to a rather damp and cold evening. No real threat of rainfall, but a misty evening now. Descending on Thomond Park, Munster leading 17 points to seven. McCarthy going to check out Sarto, and again it's Andrew Conway, and even if it wasn't clean ball, as he did two or three times earlier in the game, just make sure it's get back on the Munster side. Puts his team on the front foot in possession. Anran bringing Gallagher into it. Yeah, forest of bodies in there, and one of them on the wrong side. Monster penalty here, and it's against Pasquale this time. Yeah, and again, it comes from Conway's ability in the air to, to cause havoc. And in fairness to Monster, on that transition, you know, they do look lively. They, they try and play at a higher pace, and they are asking a lot of questions of the Italian okay, defence. You saw Duvenage having to shoot out of the line. That left a little bit of space back in the inside. But, you know, great afternoon or evening from Conway in terms of his ability to, to fight for scraps and, and, and win some of those 50-50s. So Jeremy Lockman and Number Roman one. Salanoa one. coming in. I'm excited to see Salanoa. Uh, obviously, he's had a couple of little niggles, which has probably harmed his, his game time, but a really explosive athlete. And, you know, he's got 23 minutes here now to, to make an impact. Replacing Keenan Knox. Good night for him, opening his try scoring account in Munster Colours. Good night so far for Alex McHenry, who's shown up well in that midfield partnership alongside Rory Scanlon and Reese Marshall, who always brings so much dynamism. And this time as an impact player off the bench. JJ Hanrahan now to Scanlon. Tackle from Luca Morisi. Monster go back the other way. Carry from Lockman. McCarthy again. Service is good. Service is quick and it's. Putting Munster on the front foot in yes, yes, in yes. the red zone, and then Hanrahan decides step off that left foot and try and come back inside. Hurley again, he's played well tonight. Be very pleased with his efforts so far. Both he and Ahern, excellent in that second row for Munster, and they're getting very close now to the third try. Clute with that low leg drive of his from the open side flank gets back to about a meter and a half out. Ahern is there, so too that man Hurley. What a way it would be to cap his debut tonight with a first try in Munster Colours on the secondary surge. That looked like a hurt almost got there. Very, very close. Advantage almost inevitably coming. It's so Use difficult it. to keep Munster out from this kind of range. Clute on the drive. Now, can they force their way over that? Looks certain to be a try, and it is a try. 58 minute in, relentless pressure 
from Munster. And well, he's only been on the park about two minutes. And Roman Salanoa gets Munster's third try of the evening. Yeah, whatever Keenan Knox can do, Salanoa can do as well. And um, I'm sure he was itching to get on and make an impact. And that's what he's his game should be all of, all about he's such a strong ball carrier and you know the technique in in close w was excellent there but i thought munster just looked really good i think mccarty's service has been excellent and you know the, there was so much speed onto the ball up till this period when they had the penalty advantage and then the forwards just got in their little pods and started to to grind their way through and you know great impact for him obviously a lot of speculation about him over the summer with the move down from from leinster but uh i think the more game time he gets the, the better he's going to be OK, do you know who the captain's yeah, going to be? It's really, really off? good, concerted period of pressure. OK. <laughs> but that's the kind of impact you want from your fair bench, you know. I thought Rhys Marshall was instrumental in, in, in that okay. period of play as well, just running so hard off nine, off getting the timing right off Nick McCarty's pass and punching holes in, in the in the Benetton defence and then obviously close in, like Solano. It's just so dynamic. Yes, Rhys Marshall, another who... Every time he's called upon offers so much, and Kevin O'Byrne's been in an exceptional form this season. The depth chart is pretty good in a lot of key positions, and good to see tonight okay. a demonstration of uh, the conveyor belt of talent coming through the academy because we wax lyrical time and time again ad nauseum, in fact, about what is available at Leinster. And good to see so many tonight coming through this monster team and getting it's a, their chance. It's a really good point, Connor, and, and that's, you look at the tens we spoke about, you know, the three exceptional tens who are under 21, um, obviously they've Joey and JJ, nines now, they've got Craig Casey, Connor Murray in the front line, um, they've got some ex ex excellent hookers, they've two young tight heads coming through, uh, they've Thomas okay. Ahern coming through in the second row, um, Can you, just make sure you know, to replace Billy Holland, it's uh, yeah, Snyman to come back, they really have a, a great squad, and, 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 you know, they've got to be looking to get some silver. Thank you. Eight days' time, and they will be up against their arch nemesis, Leinster, with an opportunity to end that barren run of 10 years without a trophy. 28th of May 2011 here, 19 points to nine against Leinster the last time. They lifted a trophy, Paul O'Connell. Monster fine touch, but Benetton go quickly 24 points to seven three tries to one and Munster good value they've turned around exceptionally well in the second half and controlled the game back foot, back. into the final quarter then Ben Venuti is in for Luca Morisi who's been forced off with a HIA Andrew Conway got the shot from Matt Gallagher back there Ball still alive for Benetton. Luca Petrosi in for Duvenaga at scrum half. Well, that's a clever kick if they can make a count, but that was where the space was, and that's where Benetton need to be at this stage of the game to try and get a foothold back in the game. Yeah, 100%. And it's that run kick option, just getting to wait, manipulating the backfield, and then having the accuracy to, to put it in behind. And, and some fans might think it's a bit defeatist at 24 7, but the reality is Munster's defence was well in place. Um, they just need to get up the field a little bit and start to put, try and put some pressure on the set piece or, or go back off, uh, go back at them if, if there's a poor kick exit. Oh, and they've picked it off, and that's where it can pay dividends. Now, can they punish Munster? Second time they've pinched Munster ball at line out time. Good carry from Zuliani, did really well. The open side, two Munster players coming through. Penalty. Not I need to see it. You and it. Both. Yep. Oh, for a second, he might go for the quick tap there. Ben Healy is in for JJ Hanrahan, by the way. We saw Reese Marshall's mullet a couple of seconds ago. Ben Healy, by the way, has lost his. We'll see uh, it very no shortly. From eight and He's had a haircut during the week. Good strong carry from Zuliani there. He hasn't had a huge amount of ball in hand, but uh, he invariably gets over the gain line for Benetton. Real physical player, 105 kilograms, 20-year-old back rower. Mentioned the fact that he made 23 tackles last week. 
here he is in the thick of the fray. Stay back. That's what? Well, that's good progress. It's not the best looking shape, but they've managed to make yards nonetheless. And now they're stuck five meters out. Around the corner they come in droves. Monster over the ball, Jeremy Lockman, but the ball was collapsed, so it's penalty advantage. Good effort from Thomas Gallup. Ball slow to come back to Petrosi, and now they go again. Elves in there, and then around the corner, almost very, very close. Now, what can they do outside with a tip on pass? Say went forward, I think. Eight collapse. Yes, we'll go back for the penalty against Jack O'Sullivan for collapsing that ball because it did look as though it went forward. Time off. Yeah, no impact until the ball's gone through, okay? I'll keep an eye though. Munster playing, receiving, Munster player down, receiving attention. Tomazo Allen wanted some momentum. He wants to stay on the front foot and keep Munster under pressure here. It's a great effort here of the of the tip on pass. He knows the man's on the outside. Coombs had come in as, as he probably had to, um, but just does enough to force the the forward pass and well picked up again by by the referee and touch judge. But that ball was was going forward and um, you know positive reaction from from Benetton. Obviously they got the defensive line out right to get the turnover and then they kicked to the corner and, and built a good mall and, and get a little bit of period of sustained pressure which they haven't had for a long time. It's been all Munster for the last half an hour, 40 minutes. Solanoa is OK to take his place in the defensive ranks and Giovanni Petagnelli is OK also. So back to the corner go Benetton as they come in search of this second try. Get themselves back into the game. Mentioned the fact, of course, that they've uh, lost all 13 of their games this season. It'll be little consolation that four or five of those have been uh, within a score of their opponents. The last two meetings against Munster have both been very, very tight affairs. Including, as I said, that quarterfinal playoff here. Two points the margin, and here they come again. Tommaso Allen into heavy traffic in there, not a lot of space. Ben Healy makes the tackle. Snyman wants it, Pluta is there with a challenge. Taken on by Pasquale, who's carried well since coming into the front row for Alonghi. Giuliani, he's had another good game. Sarvi bringing his experience from that blind side flank. Petrosi now with quicker ball. And then they just got their numbers wrong and communication awry. Crossing and it all comes to nothing. Yeah, great defensive set for Munster there. They won that race around the corner. You could see as each phase uh, developed, Munster had more defenders on the far side than Benetton had attackers. And eventually the nine changes direction pretty quickly because he realises that. And uh, there's a little bit of crossing and some good defensive pressure from from Keane Hurley and, uh, and Solano. Well, that's definitely one of the things that will be a real plus for Munster tonight is it looks like they'll go on to win the game, but to, to have young players playing off script like that and... Yeah, it's, it's absolutely massive to, to, for your squad depth. Pro 14 is, is, is a competition that really relies on the depth of your squad. We see the Irish provinces playing, you know, huge numbers of players, and this is the breeding ground for them. And, uh, you know, if they can get a win, if they can get good performance together, um, it's, it's great for the development. Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Benetton could do with that in a, a couple of numbers. Now they've shored that up for now at least. McCarthy. Hands free, wasn't it? Seemed to go forward, unfortunately, just from O'Sullivan. And well, there's been quite a few of those handling errors tonight. There's 17 in the game in total, albeit Benetton have made more. But you would expect that when you know, you're talking about 13 changes, a couple of positional switches, and four or five also off the bench. Yeah, and, and particularly also from the other side of the coin, this Benetton team have have been playing quite regularly together. You know, their internationals have been gone for this block, and you know you'd expect them to be at a higher level. A lot of this Munster team have been playing some A rugby, um, which is unfortunately is, is a step below in terms of intensity and um, you know it, and the fitness you can get from it. So I think it's been really impressive with how how these players have stepped up to the pace of the game and, and been pretty dominant. And we'll get a look at uh, Jack Daly as well with the white scrum cap over there, another representative of the 
Newcastle Island Brigade. Bind! Set! Debut against Zebra back in November and in for the last 15 minutes or thereabouts here. He's a really exciting uh, prospect and it's great to see the diversity in terms of you know where players are starting to come from now into this Munster team. Obviously with, with a Hearn with big roots in, in, in Waterford. We know about the West Cork uh, link and, and Jack Daly, you know, obviously Castle Island County Kerry. Um, you know, his, his proud history of, of great Kerry rugby players. Not too many of them, but the ones that come out of it are pretty good. Yeah. Quality, not quantity, but yeah, Kane Hurley, another addition to the West Cork Mafia. And Set. Jack was only Huan, Thomas O'Hearn from Waterford in there tonight. They're all hitting down. Yep. The scrum penalty this time goes the way of the Italian visitors. Yeah, I think Munster are just overly aggressive there. They, the new front row want to come on and, uh, and get some big rewards and, and just got their timing just, wrong. Yeah, a better height. Thank you. Okay. Jack. Samson still, of course, with uh, two games in hand, which they'll have to see out. They'll play one of those against Glasgow next weekend at lunchtime before the grand final, actually. Yeah, Tommy O'Donnell back in. These are all hitting down. I need a better height from you. All three. This is such a great serve for Munster Ruby, Tommy O'Donnell. And, um, you know, he's, he's so dynamic when, when he gets a little bit of game time. Mall! This has been so unfortunate. Time and again with injuries. That's one 186th appearance in Munster Colours for Tommy O'Donnell tonight. Taken on there by Thomas Gallo. Petrosi waits and lines up his targets. Speed off the line for Munster there was very good. No such thing as a dead rubber when you're talking about players who are hungry to get game time and impress the coaching ticket Advantage. ahead of next season for the Rainbow Cup potentially. Being forced into conceding penalties, Munster now by what's been a, a good response really from Benison. They've been camped inside this Munster 22. I need a release by 12 on the ground. You're holding on. No, no. You're holding on to the ball. Scandal is the player who's infringed. I wonder will they try something a little bit different or is it back to the corner? Okay. Yeah, same ploy. Yeah, I think they'll fancy their chances from here. You know, they, they probably should have added a few backs to the last one because the referee yep. made them play away um, because it had stalled when they're only two metres out and you know, they didn't really do anything with it. But you just see there, Scandal, he's just cutely have his hand on to try and slow down for a second and again, really well spotted by... Uh, by the match referee Holly Davidson, you know, sometimes the defending player gets away with that, but that's uh, not yet, it's please. not so subtle, but well picked up. And there's no way Tommaso Benvenuti was going to let him take his hand away and change the picture either. Ball. Variation this time to bring in Alberto Sarbi from the lineout. And now they go, this is going to be a try, surely. That's a really, really good drive. It was fairly clear quite early on that they got the body positions and the collective right, and up with the ball pops. Corneal Ells, the loose head replacement. Yeah, that's a good reward. Third time of trying um, from, the, from the mall, five metres out, and eventually they get, as you say, their, their connections right. They just shift slightly open side. And you can see here, a lot of the Munster forwards are, are stuck on the far side, kind of putting their weight west instead of instead of north. And from there, then they just get a secondary drive. And yeah, if Hooker hadn't got that down, um, there would be big questions asked. But you know, well controlled. As you can see here, they have a lot of players going the right direction. North, the guys at the front are doing hard, great work to to keep it alive and go right through what what turns out to be a soft centre. Another of the uh, South African contingent in the Benetton ranks, Cornel Ells, a former Blue Bull from the Grays College Bloemfontein Academy of Rugby, really. Uh, he's not been perfect by any means from the kicking team tonight, Tommaso Allen. His radar a little bit off, but this was never really in doubt, was it? Yep. Perfect, thank you. So, double scores. 
20... to, pull, to pull her opposite tries in terms of uh, yeah. quality. You know, one is a quality yeah. forward drive, um, and the first one we saw was that free-flowing, offloading game that um, when they when they when they're on top of their form, you know, makes them very hard to defend against. So Ben Healy with the restart. Eight minutes remaining, and it looks as it has done for quite some time that it's job yep, done from a monster point of view, but just can't afford to switch off. Normally, want to they'll want to press on and try and get that bonus point try, but that dot down from Cornel Ellis just uh, asks the question for the last seven or eight minutes here. Monster on the attack, though, if they can manage to grasp that, that's a really good take. <laughs> it wasn't easy at all there. May well have put an infringement in there, but somehow our Hearn used those long levers that Thunder was talking about. A little bit of a scrap developing, but uh, Reese Marshall extrapolates himself from that set two down in front of us, and Munster carry on in the midfield with McCarthy, who's done well since replacing Paddy Patterson. Now, is there space in this wide channel for Gallagher to exploit? Keane Hurley putting some footwork on it as well. Marshall, oh, that's good stuff from Daly and over the top and now into the wide expanse for Coombs. So many options on the inside. Healy gets in for the bonus point try. And Munster slice open that Benetton Weirgarden. There were so many little, well, astute cameos in there. Jack Daly with his hands on it as well. And once they went wide to Coombs in space, it was never in doubt. And that will wrap up the win for Munster, surely. Yeah, it's really good play. Lovely little wrinkle ball. Two forwards going out the back, and then that flat pass over the top uh, from Healy and his support on the inside. Really good by Coombs. You know, he takes his man on, but he, he gets that pass back on the inside. Good support play. You know, and we're talking about the, the backs here, but that wouldn't have happened only for some brilliant play in the lineup from Tom O'Hearn, who had a double effort at it and made sure that Munster retained possession. Um, you know, so really good play by him, and that's nice seeing the forwards and backs interlink. Space obviously on the outside, you know, gets away from his wing, draws the full back, and then nice fend from Healy as well. That, yeah. that try wasn't as easy as it looked from him. There's still quite a bit to do. And on his inside shoulder and roaring him over the try line was Thomas O'Hearn queuing up on that occasion. That's a good cameo from Healy. Extra yard of pace because of the haircut in the week. Aerodynamics. Yeah, seemed like a good contact. Yeah, he's a he's a great kicker. And whereas Tommaso Allen has missed the two conversions tonight, you know, Munster have just been much more, much more accurate. And it, you know, someone like him coming off the bench, who's already built up a reputation as a as top end goal kicker in this comp, is is brilliant for for Munster's depth. Again, it's hard not to think ahead to next week and these selections, be it in the starting 15 or indeed on the bench and just how Johan van Graan and his team will sit down this week and assess the pecking order between Hanrahan Healy and Carberry. Same one. They all bring something very, very different, but perhaps the absence from the 23 of Joey Carberry tonight tells you so a good deal of the story. Yeah, I think if, you, if you're going to beat Leinster... Um, you probably need Joey uh, in your team just in terms of the creativity he brings and also in terms of you know what's coming later on in Europe you know he needs more game time to, to be at his best so um, I can completely understand why he doesn't play tonight but uh, I'd be shocked if he didn't start next week very interesting to see what Leinster do as well of course the game coming off the back of an arduous six nations and before Europe but it is Leinster Munster in the Guinness Pro 14 Grand Final. We haven't seen that for a decade. And it's always been semi finals, each of the last three, remember? But the next gen have uh, put their hands up well tonight in Munster Colours 31 12. Stuck to the task. Benetton now trying to add something 
Not for the first time, that tip on just going forward in the in the wide channel. Yeah, they just have a tendency to overrun run the play a, a little bit too often. Um, some of their structure is actually really good, and they're, they're going to the right areas. They're hitting space, but just that last pass, um, they're asking a lot of the, of the ball player because the support the support player that they're trying to miss is, is too flat. No real surprise and no real argument to see Thomas Ahern selected as the Guinness player of the match. Yeah, well deserved. Um, you know, just looking to explode onto the ball. Um, you see him here in the line out. That's you know just that second effort there as he's falling to be able to have nice soft hands and, and helping his hooker out. And uh, he's been nice and physical defensively as well. So he's a really exciting prospect. He certainly is the full repertoire of skills, doesn't it? Both down. Good hit initially, keep the feet underneath us. So far, back, mm -hmm. the leaning on us. Please, can you just okay. I'll leave my leaning on us? Okay. Yeah, space then. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, so you can just hear the hooker, the South African hooker, explain to the referee that he feels there's too much weight on the, on the lean. I thought that in the first half. Um, it's obviously yeah, a tactic Munster have on under round three to, to try and put the opposition back on their heels a little bit. And it'll be interesting now to Munster ease off or, or you know, can, uh, can Benton start to put a lot of weight back on him. Crouch! Bind! Set! Straight out of the back it goes, McCarthy now to Healy to launch one on via that cannon boot of his all the way up into the 22, almost into touch. Hayward now. Can they run it out of their 22? Well, they can't. Can they get up beyond halfway? Sarto makes really good progress up beyond the monster 10-meter line. Back inside they go. Recycled again to Thomas Gallo. Almost an intercept in there, but that's lovely hands. Good exchange of passes. Oh, this is flamboyant. Excellent rugby. This could well be one of the tries of the season. That is absolutely sumptuous play from Benetton. <laughs> That's the that's the third one, a counter attack try from your own 22. You know that, that's 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 absolutely brilliant. That's when they get things right, when they get their pass quality right, their offloads right. And in fairness, I thought Hayward was was in trouble. But this is this is the end end part of it here. Just really good playoff ten, soft hands, and that's the offload there that makes a difference. And then this dummy, bang to, to Healy, show and go, and has the pace to to get past Nick McCarthy but Munster's kick chase wasn't as good as it needed to be and it left a little bit of space for Sarto who looks well we know he's a really good balanced runner but he's the one who got them on the front foot breaking out from his own his own half and you cannot take your eyes off this team for a second or they will do something like that and wasn't it a brilliant finish in the end from Petagnelli lovely little show and go all his own work in the end but what a team try he's played well tonight too Petagnelli difficult evening for the Benetton pack against a really, really good performance from Munster, but that is, well, it is only a consolation, but isn't it lovely to look at? And yeah, the fairness, they've come over here, they've, they've been competitive, they've worked hard, uh, they've tried to play a Thank positive you brand of rugby, and, you know, just a couple of passes, just over-enthusiastic, or not, not as accurate as they, they need to be, and, you know, they've played a part in, a, in what's been a good contest, very enjoyable. And it certainly has, seven tries, and we're into the final throws of it. It looks as though it's going to be 14 wins out of 16 in the regular season for Munster. Qualified, of course, directly through to the final as conference winners a couple of weeks ago in that interprovincial game against Connacht. But their season will all come down to the big one next week against Leinster. But look at this, Benetton are not finished yet. Are they going to treat us to yet another try from inside their own 22? And Munster are scampering back to try and get numbers in a decent defensive shape now. Yeah, Benetton are chasing two points. Oh. It doesn't quite go to hand in the middle of all that, and okay, okay. the game is up, but Munster, of course, long since had the bonus point, might try and finish with a flourish themselves. 81st minute, 31 points to 17. 
Panther Through the hands to Tommy O'Donnell, they go to Marzo Allen with the challenge. Ball will be there for Scannell, and that will do, says the Munster centre, and it is job done. And what a, an entertaining contest right throughout the evening. Started with that brilliant try from Divo Duvanaga, which put the cat among the pigeons, so to speak, in Nimerick as Benenson took the early advantage. Munster came back to turn it around and lead 10-7 at half-time, and then really an excellent team performance in the second half. Tries from Keenan Knox, Roman Salanoa, and a converted try from Ben Healy, Thomas O'Hearn, the Guinness player of the match, and Munster close out the regular season with a really, really good, promising performance from so many of the youngsters and one or two of the more experienced old heads in there with a, in the end, comfortable win over Bennett's on a side who have never won here in Nimerick and after the early exchanges didn't really look like they were going to change that statistic in their favour. So job done against the travelling Italian side and all eyes now very swiftly in Munster ranks look to the horizon and Leinster at the RDS in the grand final of the Guinness Pro 14. A chance for silverware for the first time in a decade. JJ Hanrahan back in the 10th berth tonight and his replacement Ben Healy in picture scored the last try that Munster did of the evening. Final score then once again at Thomond Park. Munster 31, Benetton 17. Job done and it's a very, very satisfactory and comprehensive season in terms of the regular campaign. 14 wins out of 16 is really good from a Munster point of view. And it all started with that run of seven consecutive wins at the start of the season. And really, they didn't take their foot off the gas. And a broad smile on the face of Jack O'Donoghue. Job done for Munster tonight, Bernard. And very good value for what was a, a really good game to watch. Yeah, I was I was a little bit worried from a Munster point of view when I saw the, the experience that, that Benetton had tonight um, and, and the youth that was in the Munster team. But uh, there's a lot of really good young players c coming through this academy um, here. And, and we saw them at under 20s level. You know, we've seen them in the Pro 14. And every time we do we do get a chance to look at them, you know, you think there's a big future for for a lot of them, which is it's hugely promising. And and you know, just the the fact that they've played tonight in a bit of a, a put together team and got the bonus point. You know, is really important in terms of squad morale. Some of them will be involved next weekend. The rest will be non-travelling reserves, and, and uh, yeah, they'll, they'll hope that they can obviously, you know, come out of their, this period of COVID with a, with a trophy. A very different story for Benetton. Not quite back to the drawing board. They do, of course, have those couple of matches in hand that I mentioned, notably next week against Glasgow. First up, and after that, in the close season, when everything finishes up. A change of coaching ticket and see how they come out next season because it's been a forgettable season but tonight they're really all about the efforts of these young monster players plenty of them there off in conversation and good to see try scoring first tonight for Alex McHenry who got the first try for Munster in that first half and then Keenan Knox followed his example and very quickly after that Roman Salanoa having only been on the pitch a matter of two minutes finished from close range with good support as the Munster pack pummeled that Benetton line time and time again. Always good value, Rhys Marshall as well with the energy that he brings and congratulations to Kean Hurley on a very, very solid and a little bit more than that Munster debut tonight, promising 20-year-old in that second row. Rhys Marshall in conversation there with Kieran Crowley who, as we mentioned, is heading for the exit doors. We're going to hear very shortly from the Guinness player of the match and what a performance it was tonight from a man about whom there is so much to admire. Thomas O'Hearn will get his accolade from the Munster team captain Jack O'Donoghue. Job done. It's yet another victory. Just the couple of defeats over the long arduous season. That's a very, very good record for this Munster team. 14 wins out of 16 is no mean feat. And straight through to that final. Chris Clute played his part in that back row Thomas, tonight. Thomas, congratulations. You're the Guinness player of the match. If I can get your captain, Jack, to come in and uh, present you with your medal. Thanks. Uh, congratulations, Thomas. Uh, how did you find that today? You must have enjoyed it out there. Yeah. No, it was a uh, very, very physical kind of challenge there. Now, uh, with a lot of kind of first outs and Keane Hurley in with me there. So it's great to have him alongside me. And uh, it's a great test against a really experienced Benetton side. 
Yeah, you had a few more guys from the academy in beside you as well. What was that like? The build up to today must have been really special for you guys. Yeah, no, there was a lot of excitement during the week now when we all find out on the Monday. We were all honestly buzzing to all play with each other and it's uh, all the hard work we've put in all season. It's uh, nice to see all the guys play together. Just to give people an idea back home uh, and some of the supporters that aren't here, you, you weren't originally a second row. I remember seeing you with the, the Munster 18s, you had a number 15 on your back, isn't that true? Uh, yeah, under under 17s, yeah. It was, uh, yeah, we got the change in the under 18s there and uh, still uh, still trying to get better at the position now and uh, improving over that. Yeah, how, how are you finding that, 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 that adjustment to the game? You're calling line outs in there as well, it's a big, big challenge. Yeah, no, it's a challenge and I uh, look forward to this week now and it's uh, great to have someone like Jack with his experience next to me and uh, help me out through the week. Well, you were the Guinness player of the match. Congratulations. Well done. Yeah, Thanks thank a lot. Thank you. Thanks.